come over smooching next week. All right, it is my honor that we welcome you to tonight's Finance Committee meeting for this April the 18th, the year 2022. Before we get into tonight's agenda, we're going to put them on the record, y'all. We're going to make them swear to God to do a good <laughs> job. So at this time, our swearing-in ceremony for all those who braved and uh, succeeded the 2022 elections for Ward 1, we're going to do it all at the same time. Welcome Ms. Shirley Hilton Flannery. From <laughs> Ward 2, Ms. Jamie Stout. And three, Mr. Ivory Van. And four, Dr. Tracy Hoos. These before you will serve for the next four years. And Ms. Tony Bradley Smith will do the swearing in. Okay, try to make this not confusing, doing it all at once. Raise your right hand. I state your name. Do you hereby solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma, all laws of the State of Oklahoma, and the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma. And I will not knowingly, and I will not knowingly receive, directly or indirectly receive directly or indirectly any money or other valuable thing for the performance or non-performance of any act or duty pertaining to my office other than the compensation allowed by law I further swear that I will faithfully discharge my duties as council member of ward, state your ward, of the city of Muskogee to the best of my abilities. Once again, welcome my new colleagues, uh, Ms. Shirley Hilton, and those who will be returning as well for wards one through four. And then also, we would like to acknowledge Mayor Marlon Coleman, if you wasn't there at 4.30, but he's already done it, y'all. He's official. <laughs> Let's give Mar Mayor Marlon Coleman a round of applause, and he will serve us for the next two years. So with that being said, if you'll stand at this time, we'll have our invocation, followed by the flag salute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more joke. My last name is Reed, but sometimes I can't read that well, y'all. <laughs> we'll have at this time a uh, presentation, a key to the city at this time, uh, from Mayor Marlon Coleman for one of our uh, employees that will be retiring, Mr. Morris Baxter. I'm going to read this with mixed emotions because one of the employees that you can always see working on the street lights uh, is Morris Baxter. Uh, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, he's always there because he loves Muskogee. So help me celebrate him just for that on today. <laughs> Morris Baxter began his employment with the city of Muskogee at the age of 20 and just recently celebrated 50 years of service to the city of Muskogee. <laughs> During his career, he has managed and maintained more than 59 traffic signals and 29 school zone signals around town. He helped implement the stormwater repair program in accordance with NCOG and the Green Country Stormwater Alliance. Morris was instrumental in various city functions, such as the early television programming for cable channel 14 
and the implementation of the digital fueling system to monitor the usage of fuel in city vehicles. <laughs> His love for technology led him to also work on the high frequency omnidirectional system once used to land planes at Davis Field. He served as the electrical inspector for the city and most recently in charge of upgrading all the traffic signals on Main Street. Help me once again thank our friend, Mr. Morris Baxter. And while you're standing, I want to take this opportunity as mayor of the city of Muskogee. I think it's an honor and a privilege to see someone have worked in the same place for 50 years. Uh, that is an anomaly with the way the workforce works now. But Morris, you deserve uh, this key to the city, and I'm praying for you and your family and wish you all the best. And just before uh, I ask him to say anything, I think we have a special surprise. Amen. <laughs> His daughter surprised him with this visit on the day, and at this time, she has remarks. Mayor, Mayor Coleman and distinguished members of Muskogee City Council, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Sorry, I have a cold. My name is Stephanie Vandenberg, and I currently hi Jamie, <laughs> and I currently <laughs> reside in Denver, Colorado, with my husband John, and our two sons Caleb and Zachary. Unfortunately, other commitments prevented them from also being here with me. Although they are, although they are physically absent, they are here in spirit, cheering on their papa. I am honored to stand before you today to speak a few words about my father, Morris Baxter, whom you are granting the key to this fine city. When I tell my friends that my dad has worked for the city of Muskogee for 50 years, they are amazed. They find it very hard to believe. Seriously, who does that anymore? Most of them can't say the same about their own parents. If I am not mistaken, this was my dad's second job after graduating from college. This is quite an accomplishment considering I myself have had eight jobs in the last 20 years. <laughs> Growing up watching my dad and his undeniable work ethic and dedication, I learned many lessons. You don't always get to choose your coworkers, but you show up and you do your job regardless. And you do that job to the best of your ability. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it, as you should always look for opportunities to grow and learn something new. Don't shy away from the hard jobs, because you learn more about yourself and what you are capable of by pushing through. Change the things you can, and don't worry about the things that you can't. These are just some of the life lessons I learned from my dad that I have applied to my own life and strive to instill in my boys. I have so many memories of my dad and his job at the city. I remember when my dad drove the big bucket truck. I saw that as a badge of honor because my dad had the cool job. A few times I got to ride in it on the way to the babysitter's house and I hope he doesn't get in trouble for that now. <laughs> um, <laughs> He had a stopwatch in the console, and I would always grab that in time, our rides. Um, one day, not that long ago, my dad gave me that stopwatch that I still have to this day. My dad had his picture in the paper more times than I can count. He's kind of famous, if you ask me. He is often seen around town up in the bucket or in the corner, of, or in the corner working on the traffic signals. I was always proud to see his picture because I knew it meant that he was solving problems for the city. Storm season usually means that my dad will be lo working long hours. I remember many late nights hearing the late night call, that, which meant that a signal had gone out. My dad was the one to go out and fix it. My dad worked all those late nights and long hours without complaint. On occasion, I would get to ride around town with my dad when the signs around the school zones, zones needed to be changed, or I would sit with him at an intersection after a new light was installed and we would do timing intervals to together to make sure the that the lights were changing appropriately. When I was much younger, my dad was also the one that hung the Christmas decor lights up and down Main Street. This was well before the uh, Azalea Park. Um, I know many people enjoyed seeing those Santa faces, Christmas trees, and snowflakes during the holidays, all because of my dad. My dad knows the exact timing of the lights on Main Street and can drive the entirety without having to stop. <laughs> I 
learned this trick from my dad, and I amazed all of my friends in high school. It's the little things, really. <laughs> so many aspects of my dad's job over the years has been one that to most people just seems to happen. Most people don't realize the dedication that goes into hanging those Christmas decorations or the changing of the school zone signs. They just wake up one day and it has been done. They don't realize there is a man behind the scenes working to make the magic, ha magic happen. That dad is my more, that, that man is my dad, Morris Baxter. In closing, I'd like to share a couple of comments from Caleb and Zachary back home. From Caleb, who's age 15. Dear Papa, thank you for always being there for me when I needed it. Thank you for all the happy birthday and Merry Christmas texts, and thank you for being my papa, because you're the best papa I could ever ask for. Congratulations for 50 years. Love, Caleb. From Zachary, age 12. Papa, when I think of you, I think of a man that is willing to help and stick with something. You did not give up on your job, and after all the hard work, you achieved what nobody can achieve. But there's, but there's a man, but there's you, a man just trying to make a living, but achieved probably more than expected by staying for 50 years. Thank you, Mayor Coleman, for taking the time to honor my dad for his dedicated service to the city of Muskogee. As his daughter, I am humbled to be here today and see him bestowed this great honor, one that I know he will cherish and remember forever. I'm not going to say much. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not much of a speaker. Uh, thank you, Coleman, Council, everybody. I thank you all of you. But I've had my good times and I had my bad times. But you just stay and make time. You do your job, try to do it the best you can, and just pick up your check. <laughs> <laughs> and they pay you a check every two weeks. <laughs> so, but I don't have a lot to say. I'm not a, I'm not a talker. Mike, Mike knows that. <laughs> He's had me up here before, and I've been stumbling over myself. But I'm not stumbling over myself right now. Yay. Good but job. I appreciate you, Mike. You're welcome. For more things. That's all I got to say. It, <laughs> it's, it's been a pleasure. Remain standing at this time. We have our invocation by Mayor Marlon Coleman, followed by the flag salute. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for so much that we've seen today. God, we are excited about the future that you are setting before our city. God, we know that if we trust you with all of our hearts and all of our minds, that you'll guide our steps. For Lord, your word declares the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And Father, we are only made good by the imputed righteous given to us by your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We pray, oh God, that this spirit of celebration will last for weeks and months to come. Father, as we try to move our city forward for your betterment and your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Flag salute. Salute. Pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. For tonight's agenda items, item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of April 4th, 2022, or take other necessary action. After reviewing the minutes, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Here. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. 
Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments March 26, 2022 through April 8, 2022, or take other necessary action. We have a report from the Purchasing Committee. Yes, the Purchasing Committee did meet this afternoon, and we approve all claims. I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our claims list. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Discuss and take action to nominate and appoint a <clears throat> chair and or vice chair of the Finance Committee or take other necessary action. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I said to Mr. Tucker uh, that what I'm going to do is read the list in its entirety. He will then tell me uh, where we put people uh, on their respective agendas. Uh, purchasing Committee Chair Jamie Stout, uh, Vice Chair Tracy McGee, Finance Committee Chair Derek Reed, Vice Chair Shirley Hilton, Public Works Chair Stephanie Morgan, Vice Chair Tracy Hoos. We also have other counselors who are serving well in these other capacities. Uh, Ivory Van is Chairman of the Contractors Prequalifications Committee. Uh, with Stephanie Morgan as the vice chair. Alex Reno is also chair of the uh, War Memorial Trust. And he's also a board member for the Muskogee Main Street program. Uh, those will be my recommendations uh, upon approval from the body. Uh, I don't know where Mr. Tucker went, who was going to tell me who went where, but I believe at this time. I was waiting for you to take a breath, man. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to looking out there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Yes. Right no. Um, <laughs> so this item, uh, we'll talk about the uh, chair and vice chair of the finance committee, and presumably those will be one motion if that's your recommendation, and what the uh, city, excuse me, the uh, uh, members of the committee want to uh, appoint as well. So my recommendation would be that Derek Reed continue on as chair of the finance committee, and that Shirley Hilton would be the vice chair of the finance committee. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Discuss and take action to nominate and appoint a new member for the Purchasing Committee. I would like to nominate that Ms. McGee serve on the Purchasing Committee and also serve as Vice Chair of that committee. That would be my recommendation. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number four passes. Item number five, please. Receive report on the recent Muskogee Regional Junior Livestock Show, as well as an agricultural impact summary of the same, and take any necessary action. Councilor Ivory Van. This is my agenda item, and I'm so glad I went to the Muskogee Livestock Show. The ex-mayor uh, Bob Coven sitting back there. He always said, "I you need to come. You need to come." So he, you know, I went. I went every. I try to go every year, but this year particularly, he just he always called me and said, "Come." And so when I did go, him and his daughter, I mean, uh, ex-mayor Coven and uh, his daughter Danny, they taught me a lot about livestock and how the livestock show runs and this and that and the finances. That's a great impact here in Muskogee for us. And I, th I thought it would be a good idea to have her come and give us a report and show us how good it does for our city. So I introduced to you some and some of the others, Ms. Jamie Col Colburn Spears. Hello, Mayor and Council. Hello. This is not my forte. I do not speak in public, so we will go through this. And I got Mike the presentation early, but we didn't discuss how we were gonna flip through it, so we'll figure it out together. Um, there are six days of basically the Muskogee Regional Junior Livestock Show. And that consists of seven counties. Um, it's Adair, Cherokee, thank you, Haskell, McIntosh, Muskogee, Altmulgee, Sequoia, and Wagner. And that sounds like a whole lot of people coming from out of town, and you really need to see those numbers um, in person. 
Um, what we wanted to tell you first was that the city of Muskogee itself has given $400,000 to the project and the expansion of Hatbox, and um, we appreciate that. I was never one who showed livestock at all. We also never experienced the big round barn at the fairgrounds that they talk about and the freezing cold and the blowing rain and because you can guarantee during county or regionals, it is going to freeze. Um, so we are appreciative of that money. Um, beware, we will come back and ask for more as you watch the pictures and what it's growing to. Um, the City of Muskogee Foundation has invested tire, you know, over and over um, and currently the $2 million that they have given was in the $400,000 for five years and that will, the last installment of that will be in 2024. Um, you can see all of the renovations that have happened. If you haven't been out there, drive out there. They've worked tirelessly. Brooke, who I saw walk in, spends hours watching and listening to complaints and how to make that a better for all of us. Um, these are just a few pictures um, to kind of show you where Muskogee's dollars are at work in what you all have invested and how it is giving back. Um, some students at the Midway FFA did a survey in 2018. COVID then happened and they haven't been able to follow up. But that survey says that 2.7 people come with every participant showing, which doesn't sound like a lot until you know that there are 845 people showing in that six day period. And they will show hogs, goats, sheep, heifers and steers in those six days that they do. Um, this graph shows from each county how they come and how many. The thing about this graph is you don't see the seven counties together. There's 84 4-H or FFA clubs that are represented. 70% of the students showing are outside of Muskogee County. That is a huge number for our impact. <coughs> the retail sales dollars that are being spent by that 845 times 2.7 and it's a lot of people and if you were around town in that week you saw the trailers you saw the people you saw running and going and going um, but 97 percent of those people are outside of Muskogee City Schools so between the 4-H in Hildell Muskogee High School FFA St. Joe's three percent only three percent are attending school inside our city so we have a huge opportunity to invest in people that are coming in, to show them Muskogee at a time that they don't necessarily get to see it. They may be here one of those days, they may be here all six of those days, they can come and go. Um, this is the graph that shows you, Muskogee, it's hard to see where you all are. Muskogee is on the bottom and the other seven counties make up what the top is and that shows you what a dramatic impact we have um, in able to bring those people in. This is for three years, so this shows um, 2021 and 22, so it does have the most current numbers in it. And what does this do for those 845 kids? The eight counties and their retail shops, their business people, their legislatures, their <coughs> city government, everybody, pours back in another $417,000 at a premium sale for those kids. And what happens is they show during the week, and I'll give you a kind of a brief summary, but they show during the week, and if they are in the top of their species, then they're invited to a premium auction on Saturday. And you're not really bidding on the animal because you don't take the animal. You're bidding on paying back in those kids' lives. And you're giving them money to pay them for all the work that they've done to get their animal to that point. And $417,862 was given back on one Saturday night to the kids in the regional show here. Champion buyers is the amount that is given from the donations and um, corporate sponsorships that happened before. So that is a number that we have to make every year before anything. Um, then the sale bids are what happen that night, so $264,000. Add-ons are for any individual who wants to go on and say, I can give $10 to this kid or I could give $20 to this kid, but I'm not capable of buying 
a full animal, which sometimes can sell for several thousand dollars. That $111,000 does include a special add-on this year of $13,680. And what you will learn about Livestock Kids and um, their families is that they give and they give and they give and they give. And this little girl in the picture walked up and said before her animal sold, the proceeds that I'm gonna make tonight are gonna go to one of my very good friends who's waiting a heart transplant. Mm -hmm. And when she made that commitment and the bidding started, and the bidding started, <laughs> and it went and it went, and they sold the animal. And someone in this corner said, I'm gonna add $500. Someone in that corner added $200, and it went, and it went, until that little boy had almost $14,000 that his family was not expecting from the agriculture community. And what I feel like sometimes we miss here, this is pictures of just the attendance in that one night, and I feel like we miss what the agriculture community is bringing to us. We worked diligently, um, my dad and I and Megan Harriman, this year in doing an ag impact. And what difference would it make if we invited and we personally invited people to attend? We saw lots of new faces. We got to teach people what it was like and what those kids were doing in the ring. Um, Ren Stratton came and had to have a picture with every animal every day um, just by volunteering her time. But we are looking at begging the Muskogee City council members, city members, just as a whole, to come and see what these kids are doing. Don't just look at it as there's trailers blocking my traffic. Don't look at it as um, they're in the way, what are they doing, but see what the economic impact is in our city. Um, the sales tax dollars that are spent. We sent over 500 email invitations. We made countless text messages phone calls inviting people. The, Oklahoma, the Muskogee County Cattlemen's Association fed 114 people on Friday during the businessmen's lunch that the chamber sponsored. It was the largest attendance that they've had in I know the last five years, because that's when I was there. Um, we did that a little bit different this year and we invited them into the ring rather than just eating in a room to the side. We asked that they come in, eat your food, watch what these kids are doing, and see what their families are bringing to Muskogee. So I ask, as we just kind of look through this, and you see these kids and you see something come up about agriculture, you see something about FFA and 4-H, that you look into it. We have, um, we have real live data now. We have black and white numbers on how many kids are here and what potentially they're bringing. And we just want to invite you all to learn more about it. I can't teach you that in a five minute spiel right now to say, here's what we're doing. Um, but these people are passionate. These teachers are passionate. The 4-H leaders are passionate about these kids. And these kids are learning things that they aren't going to learn inside a classroom necessarily. They're learning the responsibility. They're learning finance management <laughs> because of buying feed. And they're learning time management between schoolwork and what they're doing with their projects and their animals. So um, we had 3,600 nominated species nominated this year, and I do not know the exact number that finally showed. But those kids are pouring in. So we are very appreciative of what the city and the City of Muskogee Foundation has done so far. But we just graciously ask that you continue to give and continue to watch what those kids are doing. Any questions for Ms. Spears? Any questions for Ms. Spears? Counselor? Ms. Spears, thank you so much for that beautiful, beautiful presentation. That gives our citizens something to think about. And, you know, agriculture, that's, just, that's where our food comes from. And like you said, those kids out there, it's amazing seeing how good they take care of those animals. I mean, they groom them, it's just nice. Even your, your son, your grandson, I mean, your son does it. But your dad, like I say, he will stay on you to come. I'll give that to him, Mayor Coleman. So uh, thank you again, and thank everybody that's involved in the ag community. Ms. Leatherman, she, she, she does something also, doesn't she? 
Yes, she's the regional board. Ms. Blunt. She's the regional board, but she's passionately involved outside of just the board. We want to thank her too. And thank, thank you, Mark, and Brooke from the Parks Department, everybody that works on this project to bring, bring all this to Muskogee, Oklahoma, because it's something amazing to see and it's good for our city. So I'll turn the floor back over to you, Deputy, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. There's no action. That's just a report on that item. So with that, we'll go to item number six. Consider approval of resolution number 2897, declaring items of personal property presently in the possession of the City of Muskogee to be surplus to the needs of the City of Muskogee and authorize the City Manager or his designee to offer for sale or dispose of the same, all as per the attached list, or take other necessary action. Mr. Reed. Uh, oh. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, we have in front of you just the list of all the items that are up for surplus, and I recommend approval to release these items. Any questions for Mr. Reed? Or do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number six passes. Item number seven? Consider approval of state contract pricing from Stuart Martin Kubota in the amount of $52,372.32 for the purchase of one 2022 Kubota SVL 65-2HF WC skid steer for Green Hill Cemetery or take other necessary action. It's Our here. cemetery superintendent Eric Reeves is going to address this. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this piece of equipment is to replace a T Rex that we had at the cemetery. It's a vital piece of equipment that hauls uh, all of our extra dirt back to the back of our cemetery at, while we're uh, preparing a grave for an interment. It broke down on us. And if anybody knows anything about a hydraulic system, basically what happened is the metal shavings got in the hydraulic system and went throughout that hole in hydraulic system as they tried to replace a few parts and uh, messed, it, messed the whole hydraulic system up. It's going to cost uh, about 15000 they said, and they said it's not worth really fixing. So we need another piece of equipment. And the next best thing, because we need this piece of equipment to be on track so it don't tear the cemetery up, is a skid steer. Um, it has been funded, and I recommend approval for the state, contact, uh, state contract price of $52,372.32 for the Kubota SLV-65. I can answer any other questions that you might have. Any questions for Mr. Reeves? Approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery? Yes. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number seven passes, and with that item passes, that is our final item for our finance committee. Welcome to tonight's Public Works Committee, April 18th of 2022. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of April 4th, 2022, or take other necessary action. Everybody had time to review the minutes. Any questions or a motion? Move for Move. approval. Second. Second. <laughs> Discussion. Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Discuss and take action to nominate and appoint a chair and or vice chair of the Public Works Committee or take other necessary action. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. At this time, I would like to recommend to the committee uh, that uh, Stephanie Morgan move from vice chair to chair and that Dr. Hoos become vice chair of the Public Works Committee. And that would be my recommendation upon the pleasure of the body. Move, move for, for approval. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery? Yes. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. 
Consider approval to accept the recommended bids for chemicals used for water treatment as follows. One, aluminum polymer co coagulate at .394 cents per pound to Watertech, Inc. Two, chlorine at .965 per pound to Brentag Southwest. Three, ferric chloride at .175 per pound to Penco. Four, polyphosphate at .837 per pound to Shannon Chemical Corporation. Five, sodium chloride at .534 per pound to International Di Dioxide Incorporated. Six, flu fluor silicic acid at .245 per pound to Univar USA or take other necessary action. Keith Price Lumpkins, sir. our water plant superintendent, is going to address this. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council members. I appreciate you having me up here. I would uh, like to recommend uh, awarding the lowest bids for this year's 2022-23 chemical bids. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. Move for approval. Second. Okay. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. <coughs> yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval of the lowest bid from Cook Consulting LLC in the amount of $250,750 to be evenly split between waste management and the city, with the city's share being $125,375 for the wastewater system improvements on the South 54th Street Landfill Sewer Line Project, number 2022011, or take other necessary action. Mike Stewart. Actually, Mr. Reeves is going to address this one. The intent of this project was to remove leachate from the waste management property to our sewer system, which is basically 4,000 feet away on South 54th Street. Um, we have uh, the, uh, it will be a gravity fed line and the duration of the project should we anticipate to be 60 days and Cook Construction was the lowest and best bid for the project and we have Pete Schultz here to answer any questions if there are any. Thank waste you. management. Thank you. Any questions? I have a motion. Move for approval. Second. Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval of the lowest bid in the amount of $3,749,280 to Cook Consulting LLC for the Waterline Interconnects Package C, Project Number 2022003, or take other necessary action. Mike Stewart? Actually, we're going to have Mr. Reeves again. Okay. Uh, the intent of this project is to add and re replace existing water lines throughout the city. Uh, these water lines will uh, allow us to discontinue the 24 inches water lines that are crisscrossing our city right at this point uh, that were installed in 1911 and 1947. So uh, this will be a very big help to our distribution system once installed. Uh, Cook was the lowest bidder on the project at 3.7 million. Um, the, there are uh, 15 different lines that will be installed throughout the city and we do, staff does recommend approval and I'd be happy to answer any questions if I can. So I would also like to add, this is part of our OWRB loan, the $45 million. This is coming from the $17 million drinking water uh, fund, so it is funded. Thank you. Any questions, or do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Reed, those 15 lines have been identified, correct? Yes, ma'am, they have. Okay. <clears throat> Move for approval. Second. Any more discussion? Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Thank you. Item passes. Item number six, please. Receive update on the progress of the citywide master stormwater and drainage plan and provide any additional direction to staff. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Let me say to the public that's here as well as those watching, the reason why we ask for some of these repeated updates 
uh, is not to put staff on the spot, but it's to respond to the concerns that many residents uh, offer to myself, as well as their respective uh, delegation from their council, uh, from their wards rather. And so when we ask that these presentations be made, uh, we want the staff to be aware that they can get firsthand from the staff that actually does the work, the updates on what the projects are. And so I'm going to turn this portion over to uh, Mr. Stewart for his direction. So, Mayor, Mr. Reeves is do doing such a fine job, we're going to continue to let him. <laughs> but I'll assist if needed. Uh, task one, which was delegated to Spreeze and Nichols Engineering, was to identify data collection uh, for basically monitoring and building forth our uh, master drainage plan. The data collection was from D GIS data, topographic maps, LIDAR, zoning maps, storm drain system mapping, future land use, aerial imagery, previous studies, historical information. And uh, what you'll see here on your right is a rain mesh analysis. So basically that is to portray a 100 year flood and it allowed the engineers to basically see worst case scenario. What, what are we gonna see and how are we gonna see it? The identified areas that you're seeing in the highlighted areas are hot spots. And the hotspots were originally uh, from historical data of places in the city that had flooding issues. Um, they will continue to collect data and uh, to basically build a better report for us and determine the citywide accumulation mapping, the rainfall accumulation mapping uh, to assess our drainage conditions. Uh, one of the uh, tasks moving forward is to evaluate our storm drain system. Uh, uh, basically, the gutters, the underlying street uh, storm drains, the catch basins, et cetera. Uh, this will allow us to them to give us a better report and uh, to move forward. We have asked them also to identify tasks uh, related to these highlighted areas that we can start uh, directing as far as the uh, cost management of this project, too. Um, I, we staff does recommend approval um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions and we just met with them last week uh, to go over more about those hot spots as Jeff mentioned and when we get a report back we'll be glad to bring that forward as well thank you uh, for that presentation uh, madam chair thank you we're just receiving a report any questions before we move on okay item number seven please Receive update of study for additional parking needs at Road Re Park as per City Council direction, and if appropriate, provide further direction to staff. Mayor Marlin Colvin. As the committee may or may not remember, uh, several weeks back, uh, we did uh, present a recommendation that staff would uh, explore what would be needed for us to provide additional parking to Rotary Park. Uh, let me say that. Um, this is necessary as we get forward, as we move forward to look at our other parks. Uh, I did an interview today uh, at Langston Park, uh, where I was in opposition to the closure of the VA hospital for historic purposes. Uh, we did an interview at that park. Uh, and that's one of our more historic parks that does not have any parking uh, either. And so as we move forward with Rotary Park, we hope that that's gonna be an example of how we can move forward uh, with providing parking to uh, as many parks as we can. So, Mr. Stewart. Rotary Park on parking, so I wasn't prepared to answer that one. I somehow thought that might be a park issue. Oh, I see someone raising their hands. <laughs> Mr. Wilkerson. Uh, Thank you. The oldest employee in the room. No, I'm joking. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes, sir. I want to pass it out. Okay. Thank you. As the mayor stated, uh, I, I'm not sure of the date. I think it was probably back in December that uh, he made this request. Uh, this was a this was prepared by uh, Hub uh, Engineering in January. It was uh, completed and we forwarded it to uh, the city manager's office on February 2nd. But this is basically a concept of a, using a creating a parking lot. This is 52 spaces. Um, 
in Rotary Park. You can see the image of how much space it would take. Uh, and then, of course, there's a uh, engineer's cost estimate that was done back in January. My guess is this would not be uh, that adequate, uh, accurate at this point. Cost has significantly gone up, especially in asphalt costs. So um, I will present that. Um, Professionally and personally, uh, if there were to be parking needed at this park, uh, there's very little limited, in, in many of our parks, there's very limited green space. And uh, I would like to look at uh, alternatives to if uh, parking was desired and needed, maybe that's offsite, maybe uh, property could be acquired adjacent across the street from th that park or any park that's needed parking. Uh, just my, again, professional opinion thank you uh, mr. Wilkerson and uh, we'll probably need to have further conversations I'm sure that mr. Reed and mr. Van will get uh, and myself will get these calls uh, probably over lunches gentlemen I would think that we need to have those conversations to consider that recommendation as well as to the one we have tonight mark how can we get other concepts other than this footprint We'd have to explore that. Mm. We were asked to, I mean, this was, this was basically the, what was asked for, for us to get. Mm -hmm. A parking lot within the park and a cost estimate. Councilor Reed, uh, you like a concept of the offsite? Well, I, I didn't think that we would be, you know, taking up so much of the green space. I thought uh, at one point we were talking about on the edge roads or those side roads, you know, possibly put them some spaces in between those areas, but not using up so much green space. Like vertical, I mean, um, yes. Yeah, horizontal parking, diagonal. What Similar like what we did, what we, what we just did at uh, Robinson. Robinson. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. We could look into that. Yeah. So, thank you. May I be recognized? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Ms. Chairman, may you recognize? Yes, you may. I think that takes up, this, this diagram here takes up a lot of room to me. I mean, I think it ought to be something else done. It's just my opinion, you know. But appreciate you bringing the report, Mark. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Chairman. Thank you. So, Ms. Chair, is it, is it appropriate, Ms. Swayze, if we say come back in X amount of time, or I don't know what the work schedule is, so. I would recommend, Mayor, that we discuss at a council lunch like okay. you um, suggested prior to our budget retreat and then further talk about funding options okay. as there's no funding dedicated to this this fiscal year. Okay. okay. Item number eight, please. Receive report on the status of the CIP street improvement projects and, if necessary, provide additional direction to staff. So, sorry. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Um, again, uh, people are asking questions, particularly about the next phase, uh, which is Northwest. Uh, I know that Mr. Stewart and the Streets Committee have been feverishly working uh, to come up with a list. Let me say to the viewers that are here uh, that may be in the Northwest quadrant of the city, uh, the best way to get your input is to send uh, messages uh, through Public Works to the Streets Committee. Uh, because they will be the ones tasked with coming up with a final list. But I know we're excited about Northwest uh, personally for one reason, uh, and that is that we know that they have a lot more shorter streets uh, in Northwest, which means we can actually get more streets done uh, than we've seen in a long, long time. So, Mr. Stewart. Uh, Mr. Reeves actually has put together a presentation for you, and I'll help answer questions if needed. Thank you. As you've addressed, Mayor, the uh, city was broken up into four different quadrants. Northwest would be the next one that you're alluding to. Um, we do have a micro seal project that was just advertised, and uh, it will be going out for bid in the next three weeks. Um, nor we didn't quite get fin nor finished with Northeast Zone uh, because there was some streets that were being worked on for the water and sewer uh, Harris Road for instance, going from Country Club to out to the highway. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be addressing that in the coming months as well. Um, that street will be a mill, be a mill and overlay. Uh, AR school. And uh, also AR school 
uh, will be addressed as well. There are streets around Ellis Robertson School that we have identified for uh, to finish with this under the, under the northeast quadrant as well. Uh, Elmira, S Street, Haskell, Lawrence, and Houston, uh, and adjacent to the school around the school. Um, the southwest zone we are trying to develop at the same time so we can get as, as much bang for our buck as possible. Uh, IMS is developing the project, which is Infrastructure Management Services. Uh, they will be developing a pavement condition index for us that will allow us to evaluate the streets. And as you said, with the northwest zone, each zone is different. Uh, there are basically, in some zones, there's going to be more mill and overlay. In some zones, there's going to be more microsurfacing. Uh, so. We, we are evaluating them and the money will, obviously we're spending the same amount of money in each zone, but it will fluctuate depending on the needs of that zone and the best use of our funds to do so. Um, uh, the uh, Southwest, I did do the Southwest West Quadrant. Uh, Four Corners Project, um, the project is about 75% complete. As you'll notice, the ADA sidewalks on Cherokee and Oak Mogee on Broadway and Callahan have all been completed. The signalization, the arms, the masts are installed. Uh, we, do, we still need the uh, digital uh, crosswalk uh, counters to be installed. Uh, today, we did, if you notice, we did over at the Callahan Bridge, we do do striping. On Broadway, there was striping. Um, there will be some additional striping done on the west side of the tr railroad tracks as well uh, with this project. Um, so we are having a little trouble as far as the engineering is concerned from the railroad. We're working through that problem. They're wanting us to evaluate, they're wanting to evaluate our plans moving forward. Not a big deal. We'll get that taken care of moving forward. Uh, we have the uh, Oak Mogi development project that we're doing in conjunction with ODOT as well from 17th to Main Street. Uh, we will be doing, the city will be doing ADA corners for each of those intersections. Uh, that's a requirement for o ODOT to do the street. So um, that's a project that's coming up and moving forward. Um, we have projects in development at this time, Country Club, um, North and South projects, Smith Ferry, Maine to Gulick <coughs> projects, um, or 69 to Gulick, I'm sorry. And uh, Country Club and Shawnee, there's a signalization project that's coming up and that's in development. Um, ODOT's projects, as far as the river bridge is concerned, should be uh, kicking off this summer. Um, and uh, 69 project for ODOT as well. So we have a lot of big streets that are getting ready to happen and a lot of things that are happening. It's good weather to do it in. And uh, I, I think we're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of improvement across the city. Um, 24th Street would be the last one I would mention. Uh, that is moving <coughs> forward quite well. The aggregate is down on the, on the uh, street from uh, Martin Luther King to Shawnee. Uh, curbs are getting installed. We're in the last phase of this, so uh, the <coughs> asphalt will be the last phase. There are still some, some um, storm sewers to go and military and Shawnee, but uh, not, nothing much to overcome. I think we're going to see uh, the finalization of the project this summer. So and I would add, next time we uh, update you with this report, we'll try to get a representative from ODOT here so they can update us on the 69 Highway Project as well as the bridge project Jeff spoke about. They're still, they're let, but they're, they're getting close. And I'm sure you'd like to have an update on before the projects actually start. And Mr. Stewart, it's probably uh, fair to say that we warn our residents that with great progress comes great detours. Uh, because uh, if we do, if we are fortunate enough to tackle uh, Northwest and parts of Southwest at the same time, uh, we're going to have a lot of delays, but that means progress is happening. Uh, and with every contract, uh, I don't know of a perfectly timed contract yet, uh, but we will get there. Yes, and I think the staff is doing a very great job. And mm -hmm. as you've seen Mr. Reeves develop, he's really an asset now. He's, he's on top of it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you all. Uh, I had a question, Mr. Reed. Yes, have the streets been identified there in the Northwest Quad? It, yes, they have. Uh, 
and are, will that be posted on site as well? So they will people be advertised. Will know. This, I'm sorry. I, I'm just saying, just so that the residents will know where we're going to be. Yes, ma'am. They they have been advertised this week uh, in the paper, and we okay. will have it on our uh, the city site as well. So they will be able to identify each of the streets that will get done in that project. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any Thank more you. questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I may be recognized. Yes. Yes, I was wondering, when, when are they coming to the Southwest Quadrant? So we're trying to get there as uh, quickly as we can. Correct. Right. And as Jeff just stated, we do have a company hired to evaluate those streets, and they're going to be able to put that list together a lot quicker than Jeff and I did riding the streets out. And then that will shorten our timing. But they're already working on it, Ivory. So uh, we do need to get the Northwest Zone micro seal out, which he's just now got. We need to finalize the list for the mill and the overlay, which is almost complete. And then we've got some concrete repair, and then we'll move to the southwest zone. In all reality, it's going to probably be January through June next year when we hit that zone again. Because it'll take us all this summer to finish that up and to finish northeast zone. Well, consistent was always asking me, that's what I was wondering. Especially over there, you know, New Orleans, Street over in that area. Feel free to, to have them call directly to Jeff or myself, and we'll update them. But I have one other question. In the northwest zone, um, you know that street right there at the Social Security office, that access road, are we going Are we going to do that also? Yes, Mr. Wilhite asked me that question as well just the other day, and I told him as soon as 24th Street is completed, then we'll look at it. Okay. Uh, otherwise, with all the heavy equipment up there right now, it would just be a waste. So very soon. It does need it, and we're trying to keep it passable in the meantime. Okay. Mr. Thank Stewart, what, what is our target date on 24th? So we really don't have an exact target, but they could finish that in a month if they're if everything goes well. The asphalt portion, as Jeff mentioned, goes down in a couple of days. Now they've got a storm sewer issue that's holding them up. Once they get past that, and we got good weather, the sidewalks and the rest of that curbing will go down in a week. So it just depends. But we can see the end of it. And I, and I have to add, I'm real picky about how things get finished as well and so basic the bulk of it will get done rapidly i'm talking about the stop signs the grass the and mike always tells me don't sweat the small stuff but i i want it all to be perfect by the time we get done for as long as we've waited we want you to be picky yes ma'am <laughs> yes sir he yes, is sir. too <laughs> be very picky yes um, uh, one thing I will add to on the street projects that uh, I've uh, listed here, other than the ODOT projects, the city is funding up to $40 million in road improvements at this time, the ones I've listed. So that's a lot. Yes. yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I ask another question? Yes. Uh, for the project that we're finishing up in the Northeast Quad, do we have a report for the water line and the sewer line that was done along with the streets? Yes, I have the water department and the sewer department have provided numbers as far as the, the uh, repairs that were done on individual streets. So I can, it was all, it was done, done in handwriting. Uh, and when we get to that point, I will provide that for you. I'll type it up. Okay. So can you, yeah, can you bring it back to us? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Item number nine, please. Discuss providing direction to staff to solicit proposals for the purpose of securing a third party operator to provide management services for the Love Hatbox Sports Complex and or arena or take other necessary action. Okay, we're going to strike this agenda item, but we do have a citizen signed up to speak and Mr. Jimmy Stinson, if you st still choose to, to say anything. No? Okay, thank you. Okay, item number 10, please. Discuss and take action to direct staff to prepare and implement a plan to prohibit parking on the grass at Robinson Park. Councilor Van. You have the clicker. <laughs> Mike, if you want to, you go for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that familiar with it. Okay. Okay. This is my agenda item. The reason I brought this agenda item to you is because we just put a nice, beautiful, beautiful driveway by a skate pad at Robinson Park. We're looking at it from the south. We're looking south, and there's a sign that says Robinson Park. And the space, you, as you can tell from the sign over to the concrete driveway, you see all that gap in there? Well, cars are still parking on that. Okay? 
going on back south, I'm, I'm afraid right in here, cars are still going to be trying to park in this ditch because the, the skate park is well used. I just want to get, bring some pictures tonight to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, these rocks here, this comes from the VA. They, if you go by the VA over on uh, East Side Boulevard, you see how nice those rocks look. And my idea is I would like to see some rocks put, and see, okay, this, over here in this area. Okay, you see how it's already started? Cars has already started putting, you know, over there? And we've got a sign right there, and they're going, going to make us a new sign and straighten this. You know, I don't like nothing crooked. You can see how crooked that looks, <laughs> that sign. <laughs> So the sign is bent, so we're going to get a new sign for that and straighten that post up where it looks good. Well, we need something coming across this, stopping this right here from happening. See all that gap? Now, the reason I'm so passionate about this is because this is in my community that I grew up in, in Midland Valley. And like I say, people always say Midland Valley is the poor side of town, but I don't think so because, like I said, I, I grew up there and... I want something nice in our community. That's just another rock I took a picture of, you know. And all those rocks there are lined up like that at the VA. And this right here is another location I went to, and I took pictures of that. They don't have it for parking, but they just have it kind of like for a decorative rock. So that's the VA there. Same thing, because me, my, you know, that, that would definitely stop traffic. And plus, it would, I want the kind of rock myself that matches that sign. I think it looked uniform like that myself. It's just me. You see how Robinson Park and how nice that sign is? It says Robinson Park. But all along through there, I think rock would make it nice. And right here. Anybody on the council know who this is? Ruby. Nobody knows? Anybody in the audience know who this is? Nobody? Yes, well, Ruby. when we start this project back, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure Mark knows who it is. You know who it is, Mark? Or Brooke? <laughs> Whatever. When we started this project back in 2008, I started to bring it. I got a box at home that says that about that high. And I got videos of everything that went on at Robinson Park, every contractor that set their foot on that ground. I talked to them. And all the pictures, I even gave the Ruby family one of the phases of the pictures that I took. And I wasn't a councilman then, I was just a regular citizen. We, we formed a community association. You can ask Mark and Brooke at the time. And I think that the Robinson Park Community Association, we helped a lot with this park. And not only did we help a lot with this park. We're not like the foundation. We didn't give a whole bunch of money, and we're not like the Ruby family. We couldn't give a whole bunch of money. But one thing we could give is our time. And when I say we got records of everything that happened at Robinson Park, I do. The people here on this picture is, you notice his name Robertson, right? Robinson Park. Well, this is Mr. William Robinson and his wife, Augusta. I'm sorry, his wife, Sally. Okay, you got a Sally? Park, I mean, street over there, you got a Sally Ballpark. Okay, now they had a niece, their name was Augusta. They also had a son named Mana. If you go along in that community, you see these different <laughs> names of these signs. And where I live in Midland Valley is the, like the Midland Valley Railroad, like Holden Street, Wood, all these streets are named after people that worked on the railroad. So I'm just kind of giving you a piece of education tonight and, you know, but I just wanted people to know that this, this is Mr. Ms. Mrs. Robertson. Matter of fact, Mr. Robertson at the time, he, and he was a sheriff here in Muskogee. Not only was he a sheriff here in Muskogee, he also had the business. He's a real estate agent here in Muskogee. So that was history I learned when we was doing this part. If you're going to do a project, you should know what the, about, you know, the name. You should know where. You should know your history. And that's just, you know. That's another rock. I guess y'all say I like lump rocks. But I think that's, I think that's, that's pretty much in my presentation. But I would like to say that I would love to see something uh, be put to keep those cars and stuff off the grass. 
And the reason I brought this tonight is that when I, I'm going to say this, when I was a citizen and we was working on Robinson Park, I remember just the day we, the day we begun and went to Mr. Wilkinson's office to get the blueprints. And then we formed that community association and Ms. Stratton, we had a meeting at the church. And that's how, that's how things got started, you know. But I'd like one day, and I was looking through some paper, uh, or newspaper articles that we had more than just the Ruby family contribute. We had people in the city contributed. I'd like to one day put a plaque down there on our park showing the different people that contributed. I don't care if it's a dollar. It, mount, it mounted to something. So, like I said, I, I just want to definitely put something and make Robinson Park look great, which it already looks good, but I, I really like it looking good. And also, it was brought up to my attention that one reason they didn't want the rock down there because it's uh, it's a maintenance issue. You got to weed eat. Well, you're getting paid to weed eat. You're getting paid to keep the maintenance up on that, that park, just like the VA. And when I went out and took the pictures of the other rocks at this facility, those rocks, they're, they're weeded around. Hey, it don't take long to weed eat around a rock, I don't feel. So that's, that's my presentation tonight. And also, um, I'll give you one more piece of history. Back in 1916, the city bought Robinson Park from Mr. Robinson. That, was a, that, that property was his creek allotment. And the city of Muskogee bought that from him in 1916. At one time, and before then, they were going to have a park, and also they were going to have a, a golf course. Because the reason they was going to have a golf course, because back in those days, some of as minorities, we couldn't go to the country club. But they squashed that. They squashed that, and so they, that never did happen. So, like I said, I learned a lot about the history in my community. And I, and one more thing, it was a school called Edison School. I got the book showing up all the schools that were back in the day. You know, this, the uh, lady at the board of education one day she said, "I really would like to give this to you," and they did. And so I got it in my file with all the rest of the stuff. But it just pays to know the history. And like I said, I did go to Edison School in Midland Valley. You know, you notice I'm throwing that Midland Valley in there pretty hard because I'm proud of my community. And I'm proud, I'm proud of Robinson Park. I definitely am. So I would like to see something done and get some rock down there and make that park look good so keep the cars off the grass. And we're still going to have to go back and uh, Mike and redo the I mean, a uh, driveway, you know, put the stripes on it. But we still got that to do. So that's my proposal tonight. I don't know if I need a motion or what, but I need some action. I mean, we need, we need some action. Because they're they, they ruining our grass. Thank you, Councillor Van. Roy, do we need? Um, so, Councillor Van, uh, the way that I've prepared the agenda item, it would, uh, if approved, that would direct staff to prepare and implement a plan to restrict parking. Now you have specified that um, your interest is in uh, having those large boulders there that would prevent parking, but um, I think based on conversations you, know, I, you and I have had, as long as there's something that would prohibit, prohibit the parking, you don't necessarily care if it's the boulders or bollards or something that would prohibit car chairs, is that right? <laughs> Myself personally, Roy, I'm talking about the decorative, nice decorative look. I understand. Match those rocks. And I like things myself that look good. No, no, you no, know no. I'm picky. I do know you're picky. <laughs> but, but I also know that there are uh, alternative ways to uh, <laughs> prohibit parking on the grass besides boulders. And I just, what my question is, is do you want staff to explore those or only boulders? This is me personally. I just think the boulders look good. And that will stop them from parking on the grass. Now, on the back side of, you know, where we uh, to keep people off coming on the trails and stuff, we, we did to put some pipe back there, a pipe fence, some pipe guardrails, in other words. But I think back there is okay. It's country back there, and we can make it city in front. So... Um <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, an appropriate motion would be to uh, direct staff to prepare and implement, implement a plan to prohibit parking on the grass at Robinson Park, uh, utilizing uh, boulders, uh, decorative boulders uh, in the front of that. Mr. Tucker and Ms. Chair yes. uh, and Mr. Van, wouldn't it be more appropriate to say um, 
uh, prepare the plan and then present the plan to the committee for review before we implement it. <coughs> Either way. That way we see the plan before we do it. That's fine. That's okay. fine. All right, so Madam Chair, then the motion will be to um, direct staff to prepare a plan to prohibit parking on the grass at Robinson Park, which would include the use of decorative boulders, boulders uh, and bring back uh, for further action by the committee. And so once staff does that, it'll be brought back to the Public Works Committee. Now that building, you know, by the uh, mall, the federal building, is that the federal, it's called the federal building? You know, the building, federal attorney's federal, building. Federal, federal attorney's building. You see how big, I ain't talking about rocks like that. They got some big, them is boulders. You know, big boulders. But I just want some nice, simple. Little mountains around here. <laughs> 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 well, I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Sherman. Thank you, I'm assuming that's your motion. <laughs> huh? Is that your motion? Yes, that's my motion. Second. Okay. Discussion, roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. And that item passes. This meeting is adjourned.